Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome in this Horizon AMA. Uh, so today we um, we organize this AMA to answer all, we, all the questions you may have about the last Zen IP uh, that was just released. Um, the, the questions you may have about the recent OKX delisting or the tag by Binance. So we already regrouped some questions on Menti. You still can ask uh, new questions on Menti, so please use the Menti link for that. Uh, today, uh, Erika from the BD team, Gustavo uh, from the Horizon Foundation, and Spencer from the Horizon Labs ecosystem teams will be joining me to answer all your, all your questions. So, um, maybe, okay, because Gustavo is not here right now. So, I will just recap uh, the the last Zen IP. So the last Zen IP was made to get rid of uh, completely of the privacy on Horizon on the private transactions. So with the last Zen IP, uh, 42204, uh, we removed the possibility of having shielded transactions, so from transparent address to the address. And now with this Zen IP, we go further uh, with the remo totally removal of uh, of private transactions. So I will start uh, for a question to uh, Spencer, uh, to Erika, <laughs> sorry for this one. Uh, so uh, we had a question about the coin market cap category uh, because Zen is in Zika proof, uh, not in privacy. We had a qu also questions about uh, CoinGecko category. Is Zen both in, uh, because Zen is both in Ziki proof and privacy. Uh, what plans does the team have? So I guess to uh, to update this on uh, on Coin Market Cap and CoinGecko. Yeah, and, and I can I can actually answer this. And hi everybody, uh, nice to talk to you all today. And as known, noted, I'm Spencer, um, VP of Ecosystem Growth at Horizon Labs. Uh, so yeah, Coin Market Cap and CoinGecko both have. Uh, you know, fairly drawn out sort of verification and approval processes. We've completed both. The team has been working on those uh, for a few months now and updates are happening um, or in place. So, you know, any mention of privacy on those is going away if it has not already, um, you know, and making sure that Zen is listed, you know, either in both as ZK proof um, as an ecosystem token, uh, you know, as layer zero or layer one where appropriate and where possible. Uh, so that is in process and, and has been for some time. It should be updated shortly if it has not been already as of this time. It's a good question. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, so just to hop in and I'm sorry. Um, hey everyone, uh, Erica here. I just wanted to provide just a slight update on the corn market cap updates. So we did submit those quite a few times. However, uh, our most recent submission was approved as of earlier today. So at least for coin market cap, we should begin to see uh, pretty significant changes into the content on that page pretty soon here. Perfect. Thanks for the updates, Erica. Uh, next questions. If the Zen IP voting is um, is a just uh, is d d d d doesn't go the way through, uh, goes the, the way through. When will the voting end, and when we and will when will will it be uh, applicable? Can you repeat the question, Mana? Uh, when will be the Zen IP applicable if the Zen IP passes? Oh, okay, like so the timeline right now it's still TBD, but our expectations is that uh, it's going on the next scheduled update, which is roughly in uh, four weeks. So that's when we are planning to disable the shielded pool completely. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um... So I'm looking for the questions related to, to the Zen IP first, because we also have many questions about the Horizon 2.0. Uh, so when uh, we, will all ZK functionality will be removed or only functionality related to shielded transaction uh, will be removed? So only private transactions or also all ZK uh, features? Gustavo, maybe you can take this one. 
regarding the shielded pool, uh, it's going to be it's going to be completely disabled. So right now, after ZNIP 204, you can still take funds out of the shielded pool. But uh, after we after the to the ZNIP 207, the shield pool is going to be completely disabled. And I want to give a warning to the community. So if you still have funds on the shielded pool, we warn the community to, to remove them as soon as possible. And uh, regarding the usage of uh, the Ziggy technology, I think on the, but don't quote me on that, I think on the forward transfers that uh, we have in the main chain, I think we still use there, but it's nothing related to privacy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And yeah, I also want to insist on the fact that if you have today some uh, Zen on cheated pools on a uh, on private addresses, we highly recommend you to uh, to move them on a transparent address right now. Um, Erica, I think that the next question is for you. Um, will Zen be, be listed soon on a new exchange? Yeah, I'm actually really excited about this one. So we have been in the process of going after a lot of new listings lately. So um, we're excited to announce that we will be seeing uh, pretty soon here on BitMart. We're also uh, expecting a potential listing for Zen e for Eon Chain uh, to one or two additional exchanges. I don't want to release the information quite yet uh, because the approval hasn't quite gone through, but the process is looking very promising. Um, so definitely keep your eyes is peeled for some exciting news coming in the next few weeks. Uh, in addition to just exchanges, we also have some fiat on ramps that are joining the ecosystem as well, um, such as Stably Ramp, which will allow you to directly purchase Eon Zen. Uh, so uh, when I say Eon Zen, I mean Zen specifically to the Eon chain. So definitely look out for that as well. Um, we've had a pretty significant push to really reduce the barriers that people are experiencing for purchasing Zen um, with a heavy focus on Eon being the chain to withdraw it to. Um, so with the Stably Ramp listing, you should see that within the next couple of weeks. We've been in close contact with their team and they're just finalizing some small details before that goes live. Perfect. That does and, sound great. Yes, yeah, and, and, sorry, and, and I would just add to that, that's all obviously, you know, super, super exciting. Um, the other thing that I would add in terms of access to Zen and Zen listings uh, is a reminder that, you know, one of the really, really nice things about EON and EON being EVM compatible, um, you know, also includes bridges. And so, you know, while we're continuing to work on direct on ramps and centralized exchanges, uh, you know, we do have plans that we'll be announcing soon in terms of wrapped in on other ecosystems and on other major DEXs uh, as well. So, you know, we expect that as 2024 rolls on, it will be easier to acquire Zen uh, than it ever has been before, significantly. That's awesome. Thank you for the news, Spencer. Um, so it's more now a question related to, to DAO. Uh, Gustavo, may, maybe you can take it. Uh, maybe I can answer as well, uh, because some uh, asks on a, asked on a Discord, uh, why, we, why don't we uh, implement the ZNIP without a vote? Uh, so that's simply because we are in a DAO now, uh, and I invite you all to join the discourse in Discord also to speak about it. And the DAO is important. Here, we are talking about a core main chain, main chain change. Uh, so that has to be voted by, by the community. And the voting timeline won't have any impact, if I can say, on the code writing, testing, and implementing. So the DAO uh, going through ZNIP was the right thing to do. Um, so I'm looking at the question, and I don't think that we have <clears throat> more questions about uh, the privacy right now. If I missed one, anyway, we will come back to that. Uh, but we have some questions about Horizon 2.0. So that's something that was uh, some beans uh, were spilled a bit on Discord and on Discourse. Uh, Spencer, can you tell us more uh, when we... Uh, the, Recap maybe what would be uh, Horizon 2.0 and when will uh, Horizon 2.0 be completed? 
Yeah, so more details about Horizon 2.0 are going to be coming in the next few weeks. Uh, you may hear us refer to it as New Horizon as well. Um, you know, it is going to be a move towards a modern, scalable, modular blockchain uh, with, you know, a, a real focus on settlement and the settlement layer uh, while keeping, you know, a lot of our sort of zero knowledge, um, you know, related capabilities and, and history intact on that side. Uh, there, you know, will be obviously a Zenith very soon regarding it and explaining and outlining those plans, as well as a lot of um, the messaging and positioning around it, which we're really excited to share. Uh, we right now expect that to come, you know, around the midpoint of this year in terms of completion. You know, the tech team is full on working on it right now and getting ready, I should say, to work on it and getting prepared. Uh, you know, do everything that needs to be done, but it's going to be a really exciting kind of revolution in terms of what we consider Horizon. Yes, uh, I think so too. And uh, we have some questions about this Orion Dot uh, 2.0 and uh, real world assets. Uh, okay, so that was a question. What What are the strengths of Horizon 2.0 uh, regarding real world assets? Um, maybe uh, just recap what is a, a real world asset before, Spencer? Yeah, um, and it's it's a great question, and, and it's one that I'm glad is being asked, and it also is going to tie into Eon, um, as Eon currently stands as well. So uh, real-world assets, and we tend to divide them into two categories. One is what we call real-world assets, and one is what we call fast-moving assets. Um, it's sort of the completion of that long-term original vision that a lot of people had and got excited about around blockchain in terms of tokenizing assets uh, that exist off chain and putting them on chain. Uh, so today you're starting to see that, you know, a lot with things like treasuries and treasury bonds uh, with carbon credits, um, you know, you're seeing the tokenization of securities of stocks, um, you know, of, of bonds of things along those lines as well, uh, things like real estate for example. Um, real world assets generally are defined as usually they're financial instruments, usually they're ones that have some regulatory hurdles um, that need to be passed. Uh, usually they're ones that, you know, the whole point is to sort of build liquidity around. Um, and, you know, that's one of obviously the benefits of putting these things on chain. Um, you may also hear us talk about fast moving assets. Fast moving assets are generally, you know, ones where there aren't necessarily as many regulatory hurdles. They may or may not be financial. Um, things like digital twins, for example, would be a fast moving asset potentially. Um, so something that comes with a physical item, you know, a, a sneaker or a countertop or something along those lines. Um, where you know you can kind of show proof of ownership and be able to move that proof of ownership if you need to be because you have a for example nft that's tied into a real world asset um that's the very very quick overview of those uh at some point Manon, i do think that it would be good actually to have uh, jordan on our side as well as isaac and or luca who have been doing a lot of thinking and good work around those on to talk to the community a bit more about some of the plans around it. But, you know, what I will say in the meantime is that, you know, the team is hard at work um, on the RWA question as one of the differentiators. Um, and it's not, you know, going to be the main focus of, of the chain, obviously, um, on Eon, but it will be a vital part of Eon and a vital differentiator on Eon, and it will be a vital part of um you know when we get to horizon 2.0 or new horizon whatever you want to call it um <laughs> right now we have been spending a lot of time on making sure that both eon and new horizon when we get to it have a really thoughtful and curated infrastructure for real world assets uh what the team knows is when you go and you look at a lot of other ecosystems well you know, they're starting to have some real world assets come on board. Um, a lot of them are just starting to wrap their heads around kind of 
uh, having it make sense as part of an ecosystem or having an ecosystem around RWAs. Uh, that's something that we are getting ahead of and are going to have a lot of exciting announcements in the next few weeks around, um, you know, as well as bringing on some pretty major and important partners within that industry uh, that we'll be announcing soon as well. When we get to, you know, New Horizon and New Horizon uh, will in large part also be a showcase for our belief in collaboration in Web3 and the ability to easily, uh, you know, bridge assets both intra and interchain. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of really good work on making sure that uh, there is access and liquidity for those assets as well as we move forward. It's a really exciting topic. We could spend an entire AMA talking about it, and I think that we should um, at, at one point soon, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be an, an enormous thing. It's also, you know, one of the reasons why um, sort of shedding the privacy token and the shielded pools is important uh, because, you know, there are going to be a lot of regulatory questions and hurdles that we're going to be working through or our partners are going to be working through as we get there. That's a very nice introduction. Thank you for all that. I do prefer New Horizon instead of Horizon 2.0. Um, maybe the community can, yeah, can say what they prefer for the project name. And uh, yeah, we can definitely uh, have an entire AMA uh, about uh, real world assets, or at least an interview of the project managers on that. So we will make sure to have all the community um, uh, getting interested and also uh, have all the uh, academic uh, articles to to learn together. Uh, so still about this uh, Horizon 2.0, uh, sorry, or New Horizon. Um, can Horizon 2.0 serve as a bridge between the companies and Web3? And uh, why would an organization choose uh, Horizon? Spencer, it's for you. Uh, yes, is is the answer. Um, you know, the it, it's it's a little bit of a complicated topic when we're talking about enterprise. So our focus is on you know blockchain, crypto, Web three. Um, that is our focus going forward. You know, yes, enterprises will come to that, um, but you know, ultimately, uh, the focus is on building an ecosystem you know, where um, the people who are going to be using the ecosystem and the developers who are going to be using the ecosystem are placed first and foremost um, and making sure that it's a collaborative place for that. In terms of, you know, why enterprises are going to want to go there, um, again, you know, we'll talk about it a lot more as the details go out, but it will be, you know, a uh, ecosystem with really easy shared liquidity, which is going to be one reason and is going to be very important as well as very easy, um, you know, bridging messaging, um, the much significantly easier ability to create things like rollups as opposed to um, the process to create side chains on the current horizon chains. Um, you know, those are kind of all the reasons as well as best in class onboarding, um, offboarding, uh, you know, as well as the work with RWAs and digital twins and fast moving assets that we talked about already. So yes, there will be a lot to suggest it to enterprise. There will be a lot to make sure that it is a bridge between Web3 and enterprise. Uh, but the focus is really on getting the Web3 part right first and then everything else will follow. Good question. Super, thank you. Uh, I'm looking to the dog to see if we missed some questions. Mm. Um, Gustavo, is there some questions uh, you would like to ask that uh, you see on the document that we didn't answer? Uh, let me check briefly, but I think we covered all the questions from the community. I see a question, for example, on, on mobile wallet. Uh, so uh, we have a discussion on the IP uh, about that on discourse. Uh, so please join uh, discourse to uh, to add your thoughts on a mobile wallet. Uh, so that's something we are thinking of, of course. Uh, but maybe that will be uh, accompanied with a grant, so a third party can uh, build this uh, this mobile wallet. Uh, but please join this course to, to give your thoughts on that, to share your thoughts on that and participate in the discussions. 
I also see a question about secure nodes. Um, so yes, secure nodes will be soon deprecated. Uh, so that was the topic of the ZenIP uh, 42206, uh, if I remember well the, the, the number of the ZenIP. Uh, so yeah, by the end of Q1, uh, the secure node will be deprecated, and you will be able to build forger nodes so to um, to sustain to to support the Eon chain uh, instead. Uh, so um, yeah, that that will be deprecated in a uh, in some month. So please be aware of that and uh, follow the news uh, on this topic because we will have soon uh, some um, tutorials released uh, for the forger nodes. So yes, please feel free to join um, Discord discourse uh, to join the discussion there. Uh, do you see uh, something, Gustavo, or maybe Erica? I'm also checking if you have new questions yeah. on Menti. I'm checking on Discord also. But... I've checked Menti and I don't see any new questions that have come in, um, but happy to see if there's anything additional on maybe Telegram. Let me check quickly. I do want to note, however, that I really appreciate how active the community has been in sharing their concerns about Zen, as well as our future. I know that uh, the questions can get pretty heated sometimes, but ultimately, uh, it's it's nice to see that people truly care and share their concerns with us. Yes, I also want to thank the community for that, and uh, to say also that uh, we will be there, because uh, we... Uh, we have the vote soon on the ZenIP, uh, so we will be there this weekend to help you to uh, provide some support to link the main chain to be able to vote uh, and uh, everything related to, to the vote and the technical issues you may have uh, during the process or you won't have. And I just want to speak about the ZenIP and ask more questions. So yes, feel free to join uh, Discord, Discourse, Telegram, and uh, we will be there to answer uh, all your questions if we can and also to help you uh, within the process. Uh, do you have uh, maybe some words for the end, uh, Erika? That, that was a, a nice ending thought. But uh, if you have uh, more uh, ending thoughts to, to share, Erika, Spencer, Gustavo, uh, it's time to go. Um, I'll step in really quickly. So. Um, I know that we've had a lot of questions and there might have been some that we may have missed just due to uh, maybe not seeing them in time for this AMA. I do want to let people know that the team will be looking through these questions and seeing which ones we can answer as well as putting out a blog, I believe, about the questions that we received as well. Um, and, and I think you can confirm if that's correct. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Spencer, do you have some uh, ending thoughts? To share? Uh, yeah, so you know, I want to make sure that, that we are providing updates on conversations with uh, OKX and and Binance and Erica. You know, obviously, you've been part of those discussions as well. Um, you know, if you would like to step into, um, you know, we have been in constant communication with both. Uh, we are always in constant communication with exchanges. Um, you know, we have listing managers and account managers at every exchange and on ramp that we work with and and like I said we are consistently in communication with those folks um, on the OKX side you know we're working with their listings team with our compliance team with outside help um, <laughs> to resolve their concerns and to make sure that they understand our position that Zen is not a privacy coin and that Zen is not a privacy coin at this point um, the team is, you know, all hands on deck on that front. On the Binance side, uh, you know, we've, concer we've um, confirmed that the tag that was put on was in regards to, uh, you know, sort of former privacy token concerns. Uh, we've been working very closely with that team as we work through that uh, with both the changes that are in this Zen IP as well as uh, prior changes that we had already discussed with them um, and updates that, you know, they know are coming and have come, uh, that we will be able to work through that. You know, I do not expect that listing to be at at risk in, in any way, shape, or form uh, overall. And so, you know, I, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we are very, very hard at work, all hands on deck on both of those topics. 
Um, and, you know, we're, we're excited to kind of be able to move past and resolve them, but, um, you know, all, all good news at, at this point on those fronts. Eric, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. No, I think that was very well said. Thank you, Spencer. Okay. Um, great. And, you know, I think uh, uh, beyond that, like, yeah, we're, we're really excited for everything that's coming in 2024. Um, there are going to be a lot of really big and exciting announcements from our side soon. Uh, we're excited to continue to work very closely with the community and even closer with the community. Um, we're excited about changes that have happened, you know, within uh, the DAO structure and be able to see people have more of a voice. We're excited about Eon. We're excited about the plans for New Horizon and being able to share them with you. Um, and, you know, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, and and on, that's all I have. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, Gustavo, anything to say for the end? Uh, just a quick thought. So I want to encourage the community to participate in the Horizon Governance, not only for the upcoming CM, CNIP, but also brainstorm as a community on new projects for our ecosystem. And uh, I want to thank you all the community that was present on this AMA. Super. Thank you, Gustavo. And yes, we have uh, a lot of ZenIPs coming uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks and a month. And uh, we, do, we really want this uh, DAO to be active. So you're all welcome to join to uh, propose ZenIPs. Uh, either you, you can you can improve what you want uh, at Horizon if you have some thoughts and uh, if you have some uh, good arguments for that. So please join. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, on this AMA. Uh, we should have more AMAs and workshops with the community within the next weeks as well. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And I wish you all a very, uh, a very nice day or night or evening. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys.